Yes, I've been involved in waste management issues now for 22 years, and about 20 years ago I first came to Toronto, helped the citizens stop the uh, Commissioner Street uh, incinerator, and then stopping a new proposed incinerator. And about 15 years ago, it looked as if Toronto was going to lead the world when they banned, the government then, the NDP, banned incineration. Sadly today, the Premier has jumped to the back of the queue as far as progress in waste management. He has really shot himself and the citizens in the foot. There are actually four issues here, one is, two of which have been touched on. One is toxicity. The second one is sustainability. The third one is economics, and the fourth one is energy. Let me do them in reverse order because one has been broached on already. Energy. These facilities are a waste of energy. You save four times as much energy by reusing and recycling. This is the way you avoid going back to the enormous energy demands of first extraction and then manufacture. You avoid those with reuse and recycling and composting. You do not avoid any of that energy use with burning or with landfilling. Secondly, the economics. We're talking huge amounts of money here. We're talking uh, the proposals on the books here are over a billion of over a billion dollars. And all that money is doing is to destroy resources we should be sharing with the future. There, uh, 25 years from now, after you've finished maybe paying for these facilities, you'll still be in the same boat today. You'll still be trying to work out how to develop sustainable solutions. Uh, sustainability. The, the real sustainable solution is zero waste. And the difference between the zero waste strategy and the incineration strategy hovers around residuals. Nobody argues anymore that we should be doing intensive recycling and composting. That's a one argument. What the argument about is residuals. The incinerator makes the residuals disappear in smoke. And we'll talk about the dangers of that in a moment. What the zero waste strategy is to make the residuals very, very visible in a residual screening and research center. And the, be the, me the message to industry is this. If we can't reuse it, if we can't recycle it, if we can't compost it, you shouldn't be making it. That is, we need better industrial design for the 21st century. We need to design packaging and products in a sustainable way. In building incinerators lets industry off the hook. To get to zero waste, we need community responsibility, and we'll hear from Erin in a moment that you've got it in spades in this province. There are communities that are already doing great things, but their efforts are going to go down the drain if you sink an enormous amount of money into incinerators. So now let's look at the toxicity. Clearly, from the front page of today's Toronto Star, your Premier is totally naive as to what these machines are. He's fallen captive of the lobbyist for this, uh, this, these magic machines. To talk about zero emissions is total scientific poppycock. It is impossible to convert thousands of tons of trash into nothing. What you do is you convert it, thousands of tons of trash, in a high temperature process into zillions, zillions of particles. And there's a whole new subject today called nanopathology, which is exploring the really serious health connotations of nanoparticles. Nanoparticles are so tiny they evade some of the most efficient air pollution control devices. They get deep down into the lungs. They're so small they go straight through the membranes of the lungs into the bloodstream, circulate throughout the body, and again pass through the membranes of all your tissues, including the blood-brain barrier. So amongst other things, you're introducing into the brain tiny particles of neurotoxic substances like toxic metals. This also includes the dioxins and the furans, which have been the subject of much discussion. So when anybody tells you zero emissions, they clearly don't know what they're talking about. It's, it's PR. If you, they talk about gasification. They love these new names. They want to use every name except incinerator. They're ashamed of the name. They know the public hate these things. But we call them gasification, pyrolysis, plasma arc. This only refers to the stage one of the process. If it stopped there, if it was converting solids to gases or, or these very, very tiny uh, particles in plasma arc, if it stopped there, the name would be legitimate. But it doesn't stop there. Once you produce these gases, they are burnt. 
And once you burn these gases, you have all the same problems of a regular incinerator. You have to put on the whole series of expensive air pollution control devices in a, a, a futile attempt to capture those toxics. And if you are successful at capturing those toxics, then you've got them in the fly ash, which is extremely toxic, and now you've got a problem of where to put that fly ash. Very expensive. So, um, as Barbara has said, I visited a, a gas a fluidized bed gasifying incinerator in Japan uh, just about a couple of years ago. And apart from the furnace, which uh, heated up the material with the absence of air so it's not burning, it, this furnace converts the solid into gaseous material. Apart from that one step, everything else is identical to an incinerator. The tipping floor, the control room, the, the air pollution control devices, the stack. From the citizen's point of view, it's an incinerator. From a scientific point of view, the moment you burn the gases, you're talking about an incinerator.